subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. As an entire year seems to have been lost to a virus, the big question now almost clearly deferred to 2021 is about a COVID-19 vaccine. When will it be available? How much will it cost? And how long will it be before there is enough for herd immunity? More importantly, if one vaccine is more safe or efficacious than its counterpart. This explainer will take you through the most promising vaccine candidates. There are over 100 vaccine candidates in various stages of development across the world. There are different technologies that have been used. But Dr. K. Srinath Reddy, President of Public Health Foundation of India, has a word of caution. The speed of development, of course, is a response to the nature of this huge pandemic, which has unsettled both health as well as economy across different countries, across the whole world, in fact. But when we actually try and develop something with this speed and try and launch it into public use as fast as we are seeing now, there are two potential areas of concern. Is safety being compromised or overlooked in the search for efficacy? And secondly, what is the duration of protection? Is it being correctly assessed or not? Now, in terms of safety, yes, the large numbers of people who are in the trial give an opportunity for looking at a number of adverse effects which are occurring in the relatively short term of the trial. The longer term side effects and adverse effects, we may not be able to immediately gauge for which will require good, what we call post marketing or post uh, licensing um, surveillance mechanisms in which people who are being immunized at very high levels in the population would need to be followed up. But certainly the safety is an issue that we really need to look at. Even in terms of efficacy, we are unable to gauge the nature of cellular immunity. And that has an impact on the duration of protection. We are mostly looking at antibody levels. We are also looking to some extent at the prevention of severe infection. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not able to really look at the duration in terms of antibody levels falling, but also the cellular immunity lasting longer to confer longer time protection. Mm -hmm. So these are the two areas we are unable to fully gauge. And these need to be looked at, particularly in the post-licensing phase. Let's take a look at the various vaccine candidates. Serum Institute, Covishield. The vaccine originally developed by researchers at the Jenner Institute in Oxford University is widely believed to be one of the global front runners in the vaccine race. It has been made from a virus, which is a weakened version of a common cold virus from chimpanzees. It has been commercially manufactured by AstraZeneca and also by Serum Institute of India. SII and ICMR are currently conducting phase 2-3 clinical trials of Covishield in 15 different centres. It has completed enrolment of 1,600 participants so far. The vaccine stopped an average of 70% of participants from falling ill and early analysis of the data showed even though the efficacy can go up to 90% in some circumstances. SII has already manufactured 40 million doses of the vaccine and if it manages to get a nod from the UK regulator, it is possible that it will reach India by the end of the year or by early next year. It has also been found to be better tolerated in older adults than younger ones. SII had originally announced that the vaccine would be priced at $3 or approximately Rs 225 per dose. However, they have now said that it would most likely cost double that amount. Moderna mRNA vaccine, mRNA1273. This was the first COVID vaccine that went into clinical trials in March this year and it is based on a messenger RNA platform that carries the code for the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. The first interim analysis of the vaccine's efficacy that was done some time back showed that the vaccine had a 94.5% efficacy. There were no immediate safety concerns and side effects included things like injection site pain, muscle pain, headache and fatigue. This study had enrolled more than 30,000 participants in the US and is being conducted in collaboration with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, which is a part of the National Institutes of Health and several other organizations. The vaccine is expected to cost around $35 for a dose. It remains stable at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius, which is basically the standard temperature of a home or medical refrigerator. But at minus 20 degrees, it can stay for up to 4 months. There is, however, no clarity on when it may be available in India.
Pfizer's COVID vaccine. At a time when the world was straining for good news about a vaccine that is just about 50% efficacious, US pharma giant Pfizer and their German partner BioNTech created a flutter earlier this month when they announced that their vaccine candidate, also an mRNA vaccine, had shown an efficacy of 90% in an interim analysis. Based on current projections, the company expects to produce globally up to 50 million vaccine doses in 2020 and up to 1.3 billion doses the next year. However, there is no clarity on when this vaccine will reach India and the fact that it has to be stored at a temperature of minus 80 to minus 90 degrees can prove to be a limitation. Sputnik 5 The vaccine developed by the Gamalaya Center and the Russian Direct Investment Fund is the first registered COVID vaccine in the world. Following the first interim analysis, the vaccine was found to be 90% efficacious in preventing COVID and there were no unexpected adverse events. Some of those vaccinated, however, did complain of things like pain at the injection site, flu-like symptoms including fever, weakness, fatigue and headache. The governments of Russia and India are collaborating on holding clinical trials in India at the earliest and Dr. Reddy's laboratories has now got the approvals for this. The existing RDIF contracts with international partners enable the production of 500 million doses of the Sputnik V vaccine outside Russia annually. There is no clarity, however, on how much the vaccine will cost. Bharat Biotech Covaxin Covaxin is India's indigenous COVID-19 vaccine that has been developed by Bharat Biotech along with the Indian Council of Medical Research. The vaccine has now completed phase 1 and 2 clinical trials and the company is all set to start phase 3 trials. The vaccine got involved in an inadvertent controversy early on over a letter ICMR DG Dr. Balram Bhargav wrote to investigators in July asking for the vaccine to be launched by August 15th. While the vaccine will not be available before 2021, Bharat Biotech MD Dr. Krishna Ella has been famously quoted as saying that the vaccine will cost less than a water bottle. While there is a lot of excitement about the vaccine's provenance and the company's record of making affordable vaccines available, it is unlikely to be the first one to be available in India by all indications. Haryana Minister Anil Vij got the first trial dose of the vaccine on Friday even as there have been reports of one adverse event in one of the trial participants during the phase 1 trials when the safety aspect was being examined. Zydus Cadilla Zykov D Developed along with the Department of Biotechnology, Zykov-D is a DNA vaccine that is also all set to begin phase 3 trials. In the preclinical phase, the vaccine was found to elicit a strong immune response in animal species. The antibodies produced by the vaccine were able to neutralize the wild-type virus in virus neutralization assay, indicating that the protective potential of the vaccine is good. No safety concerns were observed in the vaccine in repeat dose toxicology studies. In rabbits, up to three times the intended human dose was found to be safe, well tolerated and immunogenic. If the results of the phase 3 trials are as per expectations, the vaccine is likely to be launched by March next year. As it is funded by the Department of Biotechnology, the vaccine is likely to be an affordable one. Genova Pharmaceuticals This is India's very own mRNA vaccine, seed funded by the Department of Biotechnology. The vaccine is likely to be in clinical trials soon, but obviously has some time to go before it becomes available. Biological E Vaccine Hyderabad-based company Biological E Limited has entered into an agreement with Janssen Pharmaceuticals, a subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson, for the manufacture of the vaccine candidate AD26COV2.S. This again is based on an adenovirus vector. But what makes it unique is the fact that this is a single-dose vaccine unlike the others mentioned here. The vaccine is currently in Phase 1-2 clinical trials. However, says Dr. Gangandeep Kang, Professor in the Department of Gastrointestinal Sciences at the Christian Medical College Fellow, Technology is important in vaccines, but only to a limited extent. If we look at vaccines, they all have the same goal. The idea is to protect people from disease and, if possible, pre protect them from infection. So in that sense, the platform doesn't really matter. But in the platform does determine certain things about how the vaccine works and how it fits into the system. So in terms of how the vaccine works, certain kinds of products have different immunological effects than others. So for example, an inactivated vaccine is not the same as a replicating vaccine. 
In the case of a replicating vaccine, whether that is a replicating attenuated SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the codon de-optimized vaccines that are in development, or it is a viral vector that replicates, that can actually allow us to have a single dose vaccine. Whereas with inactivated products and many kinds of protein products, you would need more than one dose. The other aspect that matters in terms of immunology is if you want to guide the cellular immune response in one direction rather than the other. So mm. you, you have T helper cells. What you want is T H1 responses and not TH2 responses. And that can be determined by what the platform is and what adjuvants are in the vaccine. So these kinds of choices will determine how a vaccine works and how well it works. And we'll have to evaluate them when we make decisions. The other part is how does a particular platform influence our ability to deliver that vaccine? So if we look at what's happening with the discussions that are happening now about ultra cold storage versus cold storage, ultra cold storage is what is required for the Pfizer vaccine. You need minus 70 freezers. Right. The Moderna vaccine, you need minus 20 freezers. With the vectored vaccines, you might be able to get away with a product that is at two to eight degrees. So like a refrigerator temperature, which is how most of the vaccines uh, are stored. There is also cautious optimism about the results published so far. Dr. Reddy points out. These are news releases from the different uh, manufacturers. We have not yet seen them in the scientific journals. And in each of these cases, these are interim results. While we can certainly feel quite hopeful about these very spectacular results, I don't think we should be exuberant at this point in time in our celebration because these results need to be standing scientific scrutiny and regulatory appraisal, particularly after the trials are fully completed. These are still interim results. So, however, this does give us hope, there is no doubt about it. And it is possible that with all the modern technology advances that we have, it is possible that we may be seeing greater degree of success than in the past with some of the vaccines. While many countries across the world are pre-buying vaccine stocks, India has taken a wait and watch approach even as a decision has been taken that in the first phase, doctors and health workers, about three crore of them in the country, will be vaccinated. The key question will obviously be vaccine availability, its mode of administration and storage requirements. Some time back, AIMS Director Dr. Randeep Guleria had said that COVID vaccination would stretch to 2022. Dr. Kang agrees with him that it would only be post-2021 that an average citizen who is not among the priority groups can realistically hope to get the vaccine in India. If we look at all the priority groups that have been identified so far, healthcare workers, frontline workers, elderly, people with comorbidities, it's been estimated that this constitutes about 30% of any country's population. So after you're done with that 30%, you're really into the rest of society. So for India, 30% is about 400 million people. So if we can deliver more than 800 million doses next year, then we would be looking at 2022. So I think I agree with Dr. Guleria that the likelihood is sometime in 2022, how early, how late, difficult to say until we have a licensed product. The government, meanwhile, has constituted a high-level national expert group on vaccine administration for COVID-19, which is chaired by member Neeti Ayo and co-chaired by Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Vaccines, however, are not the end of the pandemic, as the World Health Organization has recently said. Dr. Reddy agrees. Firstly, we do not know how long the duration of protection will be and whether the second cycle will start even among those immunized if the immunity fades. So, so the degree of vulnerability at the population level, we still do not know. 
we also do not know whether mutant strains might emerge. So those are some of the areas of concern. And particularly if there is inequity in the distribution of the vaccine globally, some populations could be getting immunized initially, other populations could be getting immunized much later, and people who are infected in the, those populations who are getting immunized later in those countries may travel back to these countries, which I received the vaccine first. And if the immunity is only a one to two years duration, the cycle get, can get restarted. So some degree of protection has to be there for that particular reason. The second is a little more technical reason. These vaccines are essentially systemic vaccines which are preventing severity of infection. The body fights back against the virus, but it doesn't prevent the virus from entering and you know, getting settled in the nose or in the upper respiratory tract. Yeah. For that, you need sterilizing vaccines or mucosal vaccines. So it is possible that people could get immune in terms of avoiding severe infection once they're protected, but they could still harbor the virus in their nose and infect others. So that is another technical consideration that needs to be looked at. For example, the very AstraZeneca vaccine, when it went through the ants, the chimps didn't develop viral pneumonia, but they continued to have the virus in their nose. Right. So there are issues there which actually suggest that some degree of precautions need to be still maintained, and therefore the public health measures which have been advocated now may not be as intense as now, but still need to be continued with some degree of caution till we are very sure that the pandemic has been fully exorcised in different parts of the world. This is Abuntika Ghosh for The Print. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media for more such updates. Also read the detailed explainer on this issue. The link is given in the description.